Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I'm fresh out of just seeing the new Venom film. The film that has had more production ups and downs than Simon Miller's shows and he actually threatened to sue them. But the question on everyone's lips is, is this project any good? Yes, it's not a fantastic film, but there is a lot to love about Sony's Venom. So. Let's have a chat. First, we have to commend Tom Hardy, who, while possibly not being best pleased with the final cut of the film, as per some very recent interviews, does turn in a fine job as Eddie Brock. And the best part is, is that you can actually understand what he's saying. A first for his career. As Brock, Hardy flits between serious and sarcastic at the drop of a hat, and for the most part, it hits home. There are some definite lulls in the performance, such as an elongated chase sequence in which Tom comes across like he's bored rather than terrified, but when doing silly little one-liners, all with romantic angle interests, he really does shine. Now, outside of Eddie, though, there are quite a fair few flat notes. Michelle Williams does a fine job acting her heart out, but unfortunately, the role that she's been given is stock woman from superhero movie from 2001, and she pretty much just acts as a plot device to just move things forward. In fact, she literally appears in scene to scene to take Eddie to the next thing. She's a vehicle. Now, unfortunately, this extends to Drake's symbiote, symbiote Riot, who himself is just generic as you'd like. His entire evil plan is go home, get your mates, come back, and turn Earth into an all-you-can-eat buffet. And to be fair, that's the extent that we get. Venom at one point says, he's got that I can't deal with, and we have zero percent of winning a fight against him. He's done and dusted in 10 minutes. Now, Venom, on the other hand, is funny, he's silly, he's at one point actually sexy, yeah. I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, sexy Venom is a thing. He's the perfect foil for Brock, always on hand to comment and pull comedy into scenes whether the audience wants it to be there or not. And it's this duo that reflects the film as a whole. It's very much a film of two halves. The action is either amazing or it's really dull. The comedy really lands or it misses by a country mile. And the plot, well, that's all over the place too. There were times when the action moved so quickly that I felt like I'd missed crucial information, but then at other times it moved so slowly that I felt the film was cheating me in action scene. But while it might sound like I am being very critical of this film, I actually really, really enjoyed it. There's a thick layer of cheese across the whole project that you will either love or you will hate. There are moments, scenes like a noisy neighbour interaction that reminds you bizarrely of Catwoman. And then there's also the dumb reasons why Venom wants to stay on and therefore save Earth. Those are the real dumb moments. But then again, you get scenes like, like an action sequence where Venom takes on loads of guards in a foggy room and it strikes a tone similar to the Alien films. That's the Venom we wanted to see in Spider-Man 3. Less talk and more more violence, please. Yet despite its tonal flips and flops, I left the film feeling pretty entertained. It is nowhere close to being the best superhero film out there, but it is not the worst, which many, myself included, were worried that it was going to be. So that's the main body of the film, and there was, of course, the post credit sequences too, which I'll detail without trying to spoil. One clearly sets up a sequel, as all post-credits seem to do nowadays, so showcasing Woody Harrelson and a fine-looking wig. I won't say who he plays, but fans will be pretty excited for the upcoming sequel if it goes ahead. And the second one... Well, I wasn't expecting to see this at all. It was a clip from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which was utterly outstanding. Annoyingly, this did highlight how much better that project looked than the one that I just saw, showcasing comedy, action and danger in just a five minute window. However, we're here to talk about Venom, and with all this in mind, I'm going to give the film a three out of five. It is nowhere near the absolute train wreck that I see some people glambasting it to be at the moment, but it is a far, far, far stretch from being the best superhero film on the block. It doesn't really feel like a Marvel film, it feels very much like a Sony film, and 
For those people who've watched The Amazing Spider-Man versus, say, Thor Ragnarok, you'll know the tonal differences that I'm talking about here. Just don't go believing that it's the worst superhero film ever made, is it? Ain't that. But let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below if you've been lucky enough or unlucky enough to go and see this. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome. Go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And as always, I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.